Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Rolex Datejust 41 Reference 126334 Wimbledon. This watch is available from Chronex.com for €15,790. You can purchase the watch from Chronex.com online or alternatively in person at their boutiques. All their watches are Chronex certified original by their in-house watchmakers and all their watches are covered by the Chronex 24 month warranty. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with a piece. So the Datejust 41 Wimbledon comes in this familiar Rolex outer box with a coronet embossed. One removes the lid, pulls down the flap, and there's a piece of protective foam protecting the watch box in shipping. So the usual Rolex watch box with a gold coronet embossed, finished to a high standard as one would expect, very aesthetically pleasing. There's a hinge lid and inside the hinge lid we have a flap, one pulls down and that houses two items which I'll show you. There's a leather wallet which contains the guarantee manual worldwide service booklet and on the reverse we have the plastic warranty card for security I've blacked out the serial number but you can see the reference number of the piece the date just 41 is 126334 this is the Wimbledon version and this is a brand new unworn 2021 piece so you can see the date of purchase was the 21st of November 2021. One also gets this owner's instruction manual and this is a full set piece so we also have the original price tag and lastly one also gets this superlative certified hologram tag and on the reverse it has Rolex SA Geneva. So this superlative uh, certified tag certifies that the movement used, the calibre 3235, is a superlative chronometer. It's certified both by Rolex and also by COSC after casing. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Rolex Datejust 41, reference 126334 Wimbledon. I've previously reviewed the Datejust 41 with the same 126334 reference, and that was on the Jubilee bracelet with fluted bezel. So this is called the Wimbledon version because of the large green Roman numerals on the dial rather than having white gold applied indices as per other versions of the Datejust 41. We have a 41mm case diameter, a lug to lug measurement of 47.5 millimeters, a thickness of 11.5 millimeters, and a lug width of 21 millimeters. The oyster bracelet tapers from 21 millimeters at the lugs down to the oyster clasp, and as you can see, the oyster clasp is signed with the, an embossed Rolex coronet. Beautiful luster to the outer sections of the oyster clasp, as you can see and also the mirror polishing is done to a flawless finish as one would expect in the centre section and it complements the flawless mirror polishing to the flanks. So the 904L Oyster Steel is finished to a very high standard and I absolutely love the brass satin finish to the grain of the Oyster Steel. Now with regards to the Oyster Clasp, yes it is finished to a flawless standard, flawless mirror polishing to the top side, underside and flanks of the interior and beautifully engraved. But however, I would prefer that it had a glide lock mechanism rather than having this 5mm Easy Link extension which I've now deployed to show you. The Easy Link extension does allow for 5mm of on the fly adjustment, nice positive click and also it deploys very well with a satisfying positive click. But however, the 5mm Easy Link extension isn't as good as the glide lock mechanism as per the Submariner and Submariner dates. And I think at this stage Rolex should consider introducing the glide lock mechanism to both their flip lock style clasps and also this oyster lock clasp because it would enhance it further. But having said that, it snaps up with a nice positive click and it is finished to perfection. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have a flat sapphire crystal with AR coating on the underside and there is also anti-reflective coating on the underside of the Cyclops magnifier. The Cyclops magnifier provides 2.5 times magnification and as you can see it does a good job of magnifying the date complication. One can clearly read the large black Arabic numerals which contrast very well with the white date wheel. The rhodium dial is very aesthetically pleasing, it's got a lovely sunburst finish to it and I like the way it changes colour in the light from an anthracite grey to a darker rhodium colour grey. The white gold coronet applied at the 12 o'clock for the 12 o'clock index is very aesthetically pleasing and it also complements the white gold baton hands. 
Now, personally, this is subjective, but I think that Rolex made a mistake by using one white gold applied index at nine o'clock. I think they should have used the Roman numerals for nine IX at the nine o'clock position rather than this white gold solitary applied index. I appreciate the design aesthetic of doing it. The white uh, index balances the white date wheel at three o'clock, the date complication, but I would prefer the symmetry if the nine o'clock had IX as per the other Roman numerals for the other hours. And if they had reduced the proportions of the green Roman numerals, they could have fitted in the IX at nine o'clock. And I think the symmetry would have been improved and aesthetically would have been more pleasing. With regards to the bezel, it's a 18 karat gold, white gold fluted bezel. As you can see, absolutely gorgeous the way the white gold fluted bezel catches the light. I also like the large bevel on the edge of the flat sapphire crystal, the way it catches the light. The AR coating does an outstanding job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the white gold baton hands. It's just absolutely beautiful the way the crystal catches the light on the edge. The date just is beautifully finished with regards to the head of the piece. Flawless mirror polishing to the tops of the lugs, which complements the flawless mirror polishing to the flanks. It really is finished to a beautiful finish. I also like the mirror polishing of the case because it complements the mirror polish center links in the bracelet. Beautiful luster to the brass satin finishing to the 9040 oyster steel on the outer links. And we've also got flawless mirror polishing to the flanks, which complements the mirror polish center section of the oyster bracelet, the oyster clasp, and also the flanks. Right, so I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 18-inch wrist. Now, I haven't sized the bracelet. I've simply taken the watch out of the watch box and it is a tight fit, but I can get it on wrist and close the oyster clasp, as you can see. Now, for comfort, I would like to have an additional link added, but for the majority of collectors with a six to seven inch wrist or even up to a maximum seven and a half inch wrist, this Datejust 41 Wimbledon will fit you to perfection. Incredibly comfortable piece to wear for long periods of time, such as 8 to 12 hours per day. The proportions of this piece are perfection personified. The 41mm head of the piece is perfectly balanced by the 21mm oyster bracelet. And the oyster bracelet tapers very well from 21mm at the lugs down to the oyster clasp, as you can see. Beautiful luster to the outer links, which complements the mirror polished center links. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, I've previously reviewed the Datejust 41 with the same reference, 126334, but that was on the Jubilee bracelet. And purest Rolex, purest Rolex collectors would argue that fluted bezel Datejust should have a Jubilee bracelet rather than an Oyster bracelet. They would argue that the smooth bezel version of the Datejust 41 should have the Oyster bracelet. This is subjective. Now, I'm a purest Rolex collector and I actually like both the Jubilee bracelets with the fluted bezel and also this oyster bracelets with the contrasting mirror polish center links. So I think it looks very good because it matches the mirror polishing to the tops of the lugs and the flanks. The rhodium dial is absolutely gorgeous, the way it changes color in the light from an anthracite gray to the darker rhodium uh, gray and also I like the green Roman numerals, they contrast very well. So the white gold bat on hands, are clearly legible as you can see. Really the only thing I dislike is the solitary nine o'clock applied index made from white gold. I think they should have used the IX in green Roman numerals. I think they would have looked better balanced. But it's a gorgeous looking piece. Feel good factor is outstanding. Comfort level is outstanding. Now, as you'll know from my previous reviews, I consider 48 millimeters lug to lug measurement to be the sweet spot, regardless of whether you're a collector with a six to seven inch wrist or a seven to eight inch wrist respectively. At 47.5 millimeters lug to lug measurement, it is very close to that sweet spot, that 48 millimeter perfection. The thing I most like about this is it is only 11.5 millimeters thick. So it's a very low profile piece despite being 41 millimeters. It does have wrist presence, but it lacks heft. It's only 142 grams with all the links in the Oyster bracelet. Now, another thing I always comment about in my previous reviews is I consider circa 50, 150 grams to be the sweet spot because it gives a nice feeling of wrist presence and heft and quality, but it's also comfortable to wear the piece for long periods of time. At 142, it really is a very well balanced and comfortable piece. It doesn't feel top heavy. And the Oyster bracelet feels every bit as comfortable as the Jubilee bracelet. I've reviewed both and I can tell you the comfort level of this Oyster bracelet is just as good as the Jubilee bracelet version. Right, so let's test the crown. 
It has a screw down twin lock crown which provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters of water resistance. Coin edge finish to it and it's embossed with the Rolex coronet as you can see. And the line underneath the coronet denotes that it is a twin lock crown providing 100 meters. So let's test the action. Absolutely sublime, silky smooth. It's an absolute delight to operate both Rolex twin lock and trip lock crowns. I really consider them to be the best crown executions in the world. Nothing else comes close. It's just silky smooth. The interface between the internal thread of the crown and the external thread of the crown tube are just perfection personified, silky smooth. So in the first position, it's the manual wind position. And one can manually wind the caliber 3235 automatic to top it up to its maximum 70 hour power reserve. One can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up. It's an absolute pleasure to manually wind the caliber 3235. Pulling it out to the first click position is the quick set date complication position. As you can see, the quick set works as one would expect. Nice positive click every day of the month clicks over with a reassuring click. So it's an absolute delight to use. Pulling it out to the second click is the final click position, which is the time setting position. Now it's a curiosity of the chronology movements, the caliber 3235, for example, that one rotates the crown in the opposite direction to the hands, as one would expect. Normally with an automatic movement, one rotates the crown clockwise, and that has the effect of rotating the hands clockwise. With a chronology movement, such as the 3235, it has the opposite effect. For example, when I rotate the crown clockwise, it rotates the hands anti-clockwise. One would expect the hands to rotate clockwise. Rotating the crown anti-clockwise rotates the hands clockwise. So it does take some getting used to because one has to rotate the crown in the opposite direction to the convention. But once one becomes familiar with the caliber 3235, it is an absolute pleasure. It's got a nice firm resistance to it, no back play whatsoever, and it feels nice and solid. One can feel the gearing in the movement, and I really like the feeling of it. It feels like a very solid well-made movement. Pushing it back in restarts the movement and as you can see the second hand now begins to sweep around the dial once again. So it has hand winding and hacking. Let's test screwing it back down. Immediate thread pickup. This is one of the greatest crown executions ever made. The twin lock crown is an absolute masterpiece in crown execution. It really is an absolute delight to use. Immediate thread pickup and the threading is so silky smooth it's just sublime. Right so let's look at the case back solid oyster steel case back, sterile as per other Rolex pieces, longitudinal brush satin finishing to the centre section which, com which contrasts with the mirror polishing to the circumference, it's also coin edge finished and it provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 metres of water resistance which is perfectly acceptable for a daily wear piece. So finished to a high standard, personally I would prefer if Rolex engraved their case backs with the coronets or if they had some specification engraved, but this is the style of their case backs. The benefit of it being completely sterile and smooth is it is very comfortable against the wrist wearing the piece for long periods of time such as 8 to 12 hours per day because of that perfectly smooth longitudinal brass satin finishing to it. The end links are a good tight fit to the case, the underside of the case and also the end links are finished to perfection as one would expect. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, the loom on the baton hands, which is chromolite, has not disappointed. It's glowing brightly and it will continue to glow for a good length of time. Similar blue tone to BGW9 Super Loom Nova, so really the disappointment is the use of one solitary applied index which is white gold and then infilled with chromolite at 9 o'clock. I think that they should have used the Roman numerals at 9 o'clock to retain the symmetry of the piece because it really doesn't work just having the one 9 o'clock index on the dial. If they wanted to add to the orientation, rather than having the white gold applied coronet at 12 o'clock for the 12 o'clock index, they should have used an index at 12 o'clock because really the convention is to orientate a dial to either have a, a triangular index or a rectangular index at 12 o'clock and therefore when looking at the piece in the dark one can tell immediately where 12 o'clock is on the dial and therefore orientate the hands. By having the index at 9 o'clock to orientate the dial it isn't as effective as for example having a loomed triangle at 12 o'clock. One doesn't need to know where 9 o'clock is, really 12 o'clock is the default position for dial orientation. 
So I dislike the unbalanced 9 o'clock loomed index, um, but having said that, the loom on the chrome lights, uh, bat on hands, it works very well. So the bat on hands work excellent, and also I would say that the, although it's not to my personal taste, the 9 o'clock index, the loom is performing very well. Right, so let's discuss the movement used, because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. This is powered by the Calibre 3235, which is a chronology movement. It's one of the greatest Rolex calibres ever made. It's incredibly efficient, and because it's a chronology movement, the escapement is far more efficient than its predecessor, the Calibre 3135. The 3235 is used in several Rolex pieces, including the Submariner Date. It has 31 joules, and it runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 Hz. It has hand winding and hacking, which useful complications, and it has an impressive 70-hour power reserve. Its predecessor, the Calibre 3135, only had a 48-hour power reserve, so that is a significant enhancement of this date, just 41, the 70-hour power reserve versus the 48 hours of its predecessor. The stated accuracy of the Calibre 3235 is minus 2 to plus 2 seconds per day, and it's certified by Rolex and by COSC after casing to being within those superlative chronometer limits of minus 2 to plus 2 seconds. This one is running consistently at plus or minus 0 seconds per day. Perfect accuracy when it's fully wound to its maximum 70 hour power reserve, so it actually exceeds the minus 2 to plus 2 second superlative chronometer limits, 0 seconds per day. It is an incredibly accurate movement. It's reliable, well proven, accurate movement, and really it's one of the greatest Rolex calibers, no negatives to it whatsoever. It's also highly anti-magnetic because it has a paramagnetic parachrome blue hairspring. It's also highly shock resistant due to using paraflex shock absorbers. Previous Rolex calibers use KIF shock absorbers, which are excellent, but the Paraflex shock absorbers are superior in their shock resistance to KIF, and I personally prefer Paraflex shock absorbers to KIF. So, no negatives to the movement whatsoever. Accurate, reliable, 70 hour power reserve. And as I've discussed in previous reviews, one characteristic I like of 4 Hz movements is if you look at the second hand, the sweep of it, with 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 Hz it's got a very smooth sweep to the second hand. With 3 hertz movements, the second hand judders or stutters around the dial more. I like the smooth sweep of the 4 hertz movement, as you can see. The other thing I really like about 28,800 vibrations per hour used in the Calibre 3235 is it gives the perfect balance. 4 hertz is the perfect compromise between power reserve and accuracy. If one increases the beat rate of a movement, of course, one gains accuracy, but the negative is one sacrifices power reserve. And if one gains power reserve, inevitably one has to reduce the beat rate, and therefore one sacrifices accuracy. So I regard 28,800 vibrations per hour and 4 hertz to be the perfect compromise between power reserve and accuracy. This is running at 0 seconds per day accuracy, and it still has 70 hours of power reserve. So really, the Calibre 3235 is a masterpiece and it's reason alone to purchase this date just 41 Wimbledon. So lastly, I'll summarize the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So the price point of this watch is 15,790 euro. It is significantly above retail. However, that is wholly justified because the Datejust 41 Wimbledon is highly sought after by Rolex collectors. It's an incredibly difficult piece to purchase from Rolex authorised dealers and therefore prices are appreciating and it is worth paying a significant price over retail in order to buy it immediately from Chronex.com because one doesn't have the uncertainty of putting one's name down on a waiting list or expression of interest list. One can buy the piece and get it on risk today. So yes, I think as a collectible piece, the price over retail is justified. 15,790 is expensive, but however, it is going to appreciate as with all Rolex pieces, including the other Datejust 41s. With time, it is going to appreciate in value exponentially. So it's a strong investment piece. The Wimbledon is one of the most sought after of the Datejust 41s, regardless of whether one purchases it on the Oyster bracelet or the Jubilee bracelet version. 
The key point is that it should have the white gold fluted bezel rather than the smooth bezel. So I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I consider it to be excellent quality and excellent value. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Rolex State Just 41 reference 126334 Wimbledon. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.